Okay, today we're covering 4.3, the second part of 4.3, um, which means that it's really 4.3b, uh, applications of linear equations, and this is going to be solving a formula for a variable, also referred to as multivariable equations. So when we're solving a formula for a variable, that means that we are going to um, solving means rewriting the formula so that the variable that you've been asked to solve for is isolated on one side of the equation. Now, I want you to draw a box here, and in that box, I hope you remember what your order of operations is, because that's kind of important. We had a little acronym that we used, um, PEMDAS, so you want to write that in there. The other thing that you need to remember is that a lowercase versus a capital letter matters. I don't know, I kind of left off one of those L's. There you go. Capital letter, lowercase versus capital letters matter. Okay, so whatever you see in the formula, you have to make sure that you keep it that way. You can't change from a capital P to a lowercase p or um, vice versa. Now, to work these problems, what you want to think, if I'm solving for L, then I'm going to plug in a number for L. For lowercase L's, we generally write them like that because otherwise it looks like a 1. That's like a scripted L. So if I plug the number in for L, what I want you to think of is the first thing you would do would be to multiply that number by 2, because if I put a number here, I would multiply it by 2, and then I would add it to 2w, okay? And then that would give me the answer to p. So that's the normal way that I do it, and to solve this formula, we're just going to work that backwards, and we're going to undo those operations. So to start off with, if it said plus 2w, I'm going to subtract 2w from both sides of my equation. So I start off, subtract 2w, and that goes away. And that leaves me with p minus 2w equals 2l. And then the next thing says, if I'm working up because I'm going backwards, says multiply by 2. So I'm going to divide by 2. And I'm going to go ahead and write it like this. You can put the whole thing over it sometimes, but I see it's going to cancel here. So that gives me an answer of p over 2 minus w equals l, because these 2's cancel and those 2's cancel. So now I have solved that formula for l. Okay? Alright, we're just going to do some more examples. I'm going to go through the same process each time. Alright, so this time I'm going to, I'm trying to solve for m. So if I plug a number in for m, the first thing I would do would be to multiply by p. And after I multiplied it by p, then I would add d to it. So we're going to go backwards. And that means instead of adding d, I'm going to subtract d. And instead of multiplying by p, I'm going to divide by p. So we'll start with subtracting d from both sides. That's kind of a, um, a crooked line. Ah, poo. All right, and that gives me my d's cancel, leaving me with capital D. T minus capital D equals lowercase p and m. And then we're going to divide by p. So I'm going to divide by p, and nothing's going to cancel here, so I'm just going to write it like that. Either way is acceptable. And that gives me a final answer of T minus D over p. And I have, okay, so notice each of these problems. Solving for M, M is by itself. Solving for L, L is by itself. And that's how you know that you have finished your problem. All right, so I picked some ones out, even problems out of your uh, homework tonight assignment. And I'm going to work through these problems just so that we can continue. 
All right, so I have um, D equals RT, and I'm trying to solve for R. So if I plug my number in, all I would do would be to multiply that by T. So to go backwards, okay, then I'm going to divide by T because that's the only operation. So I divide both sides by T. And sometimes when they're this easy, you don't need to go through this process, but if you're in the habit of doing it, then it gets easy when you have one that's more complicated. So D over T equals R. I have now solved this. Do you recognize the formula? This is our distance formula because distance equals rate times time. Okay, let's look at 64. C equals 2 pi r. Uh, hopefully you recognize that the operation over here is uh, all multiplication. So as I'm solving for r, um, if I plugged a number in for r, the next thing I would do would be to multiply that by 2 pi. So to go backwards, I'm going to divide it by 2 pi. So divide both sides by 2 pi. And they cancel here. And that gives me an answer of c over 2 pi is equal to r. Again, I have that r all by myself, all by itself. And notice again, this is a little r, and that's a capital R. So you got to keep it the way it is in the original problem. And uh, we recognize, or should recognize, this is, I can't write, circumference equals, uh, however you want to think about it, pi times, I didn't want to write that. <laughs> it's going to take out the whole thing. Pi times twice the radius. Okay, two more. A equals one half H A plus B, and we're solving for B. So this one's a little more complicated. But again, let's go through these steps. So um, if I have B, if I put a number in for B, the first thing I would do to calculate it would be add it to A. So I would add A. And then after I add A, I might multiply by H. And then I would multiply by 1 half. So to go backwards, because I'm solving that, I'm going to divide by 1 half. Now, dividing by fractions is the same thing as multiplying by the reciprocal. So I really prefer to say, oh, that means I can just multiply this one by 2. Those are the same things. Then I'm going to divide it by H, and then I'm going to subtract A. So the first thing I'm going to do is multiply both sides of my equation by 2. So I have 2 times A equals 2 times 1 half H and then A plus B. These cancel. So um, I have 2A equals H times A plus B. The next thing I'm going to do is divide by H. So my H's cancel and that gives me 2A over H equals A plus B. And then the last thing said to subtract A. So if I subtract A, that gives me 2 big A over H minus A is equal to B. And here's a, a classic example of why it's important to keep the difference between big A and little a, because this big A, I don't know if you recognize that formula, but that is the area of a trapezoid, okay? And big A stands for the area, and little a and b stands for the sides, and h is the height. Okay, last problem. Solve s equals p plus prt for t. So if I plug in for t, the first thing I'm going to do is multiply by big P little r. And then I'm going to subtract P. So to do that backwards, 
that means I'm going to actually I didn't say that right it's not that I would subtract that's add so this I would multiply by PR and then I would add P so to solve it I'm going to subtract P and then I'm going to divide by PR so as we said first we're going to subtract P S minus P equals PRT and then I divide by PR and you can do it like this or you can divide it up either way I'm gonna leave it like that so T equals S minus P over PR so that's the end and um, it's important as you go through these problems as easy as they may be for you I am looking for steps and the process of doing it so just because you can do this in your head doesn't mean you don't need to show me the steps so down here in a little bubble I want you to write show steps thank you if you have any questions come see me